Hi, it's Aurelius here. In this video tutorial, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step how to do YouTube keyword research. I'm gonna walk you through my entire process from start to finish, from ideation to topic involvement, and knowing which keywords to go for that will give me a, a more a likelihood of getting my videos ranked on the first page or more so the top of the YouTube search results. So whether you're just starting out with your YouTube channel or you're looking to grow your YouTube channel, I think these tips and these steps will help you refine those keywords find those winning keywords so that you're not going after keywords that are too saturated, but more so keywords that have low competition and ones that will give you a higher chance of getting your videos ranked for those particular keywords. All right, right off the bat in my YouTube studio, you can see YouTube search is my number one traffic source at 37.4%. Taking a look at some of the individual video stats, you can see YouTube search, it's generated over 120,000 views for this individual video alone. Here's another example where YouTube search brought in over 45,000 views. And here's another that brought in over 35,000 views just from YouTube. YouTube search. So in this video, I'm going to show you my process to doing YouTube keyword research, no matter what niche you're in. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is to have one main topic in mind. So that can be as vague or as broad as you want, because we're gonna dive deeper and narrow in on that niche or that topic. If you have no idea what video topic to start with, I've got another video that may help you in terms of brainstorming some topics. It's called 20 YouTube Video Ideas, which I'll link up in a card right here for you to watch after. But as an example, let's say email marketing is that main topic of yours. The first thing I would do to narrow in on that actual email marketing topic and gather or generate some topic ideas that come under email marketing is by going to YouTube itself. Here I am on YouTube and what you would do is simply start typing and use YouTube's autocomplete slash autosuggest. So right at the search bar here, I would simply search for email marketing. And as you start typing, YouTube will suggest some further keywords that come after email marketing. And this is really based on relevancy and also popularity. Because email marketing is quite a broad topic, I would definitely narrow in on that actual subject, especially if you're just starting out and have no authority. So that's a quick and free way of actually knowing what kinds of topics to post on YouTube. The next step or another way of actually doing some keyword research that will give you actual analytics data and stats is by using a tool called vidIQ. This video is sponsored by vidIQ. However, I do use vidIQ on a daily basis to find those winning keywords. And it's been one of the most invaluable tools that help me rank a lot of these videos that you see. Think of vidIQ as your personal YouTube consultant. Sign up is free on their basic plan and it will give you the basics really and some keywords that you can start with. But once you're ready to grow and level up your YouTube channel, then I would suggest at least going on the pro plan. And by the way, I'll link up all these tools and resources in the description box below. So go check that out. Now, once you've signed up, you wanna make sure you install the extension, whether that's for Chrome or for Firefox as they support both. Now let's go through the steps in using vidIQ to do some keyword research. To access vidIQ's Keyword Inspector, make sure you log into vidIQ, then go to Keywords. Another way to access the Keyword Inspector is by simply going to YouTube. Anywhere on YouTube, you'll see the browser extension, which is why it's important to install that vidIQ Chrome extension or Firefox extension. You'll see here with the menu, the Keyword Inspector. So if I click the Keyword Inspector, the Keyword Inspector tool will appear. But in this example, I'm just going to show you how to do it within vidIQ's website. Let's use that email marketing topic example again. So in the search box, I would simply enter email marketing. Again, you can start broad if you want to, or if you kind of know what your topic will be, then you can enter it there, such as email marketing tips to narrow in even more. But vidIQ will do its job and find those relevant keywords for you. The first thing you wanna make sure you do is to sort it by a related score. Usually that's the default. And with the related score, obviously the higher it is, the more relevant it is to that actual keyword that you first search for. The next column shows you the search volume per month. So I can see, for example, email marketing tutorial get searched about 25,000 times per month. And this is exactly why I love vidIQ as opposed to some of the other keyword research tools out there for YouTube, because it actually gives you those numbers and that data that's also important. Other tools will either give you that green light, orange light, or that red light in terms of search volume and competitiveness. I like to look at numbers, which is where vidIQ comes in. Now, before I move ahead with the next column, I wanna explain what's a good amount of search volume. Is it 25,000? Is it 3,000? Well, what I would say is, of course, 
the more of a search volume it is, sometimes usually you're going to be heading for a more competitive or saturated key phrase that you're going after. Because you can imagine all these other YouTube creators going after that keyword with a high search volume. So they're probably going after the same key phrase. On the other hand, if you look at something else like this one here, email marketing campaign, there's only 931 searches per month. Whether this is actually worth going after or not, that's up to you. You know, you may get slow traffic and a trickle of traffic each month, but I think it all adds up in the end. Personally, what I look for is anything above a thousand searches a month. For instance, this one here, email marketing best practices. This is something I would go for 1400 searches. So moving on and with that in mind, I would look at the competition and seeing if that is uh, very low. So it'll give you an indication. We've got 18.5 here compared to something that is more competitive. Let's go something, let's filter it by high actually. So I filtered it by competition and you can see something like this it's very high high and these are keywords i would not go for and it's not really relevant too if you're just starting out look for ones that are very low in competition and those will be the easiest to rank for as a disclaimer these keyword research tools are helpful in terms of knowing you know the demand and the competition of certain keywords but it doesn't guarantee that your videos will get ranked on the first page or of youtube or that first result there are other important factors such as viewer retention you know are they actually watching your videos throughout and are people actually clicking on your thumbnail to begin with so it's not the be all end all just because you found a winning keyword at this point we know what related score or search volume and competition is but what is overall well overall score is the indication, you know, out of 100, whether this keyword is actually go good to go for. Of course, the higher it is, the more attractive it is to go for. Personally for me, because I've already established my YouTube channel and have some traction going with my YouTube channel, I would go for something above 50 out of 100. But if you're just starting out, anything above 60, 70, that's what I would go for. You know, based on what I've said so far, I'm looking at email marketing for beginners as my next video. I've actually got a video on email marketing for beginners, so that's ranking well as well. But the reason why my justification is because of the search volume, over 47,000 searches per month, uh, very low competition, and the overall score it's given me a 71 out of 100. That's based on the numbers, but what I am also uh, liking is the fact that email marketing for beginners is actually targeted towards a particular demographic. So what I would do is to take note or jot it down somewhere in your keyword ideas. Or for me, I like to store everything in my Notion uh, project file. Just to give you a quick rundown on my YouTube content calendar, I did stay in one section right here. This is exactly where I would add those keywords. All right, so it would be email marketing for beginners. So then I will take note, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need to script or outline that video just yet, but that's a potential topic for a future video. By the way, if you are interested in knowing the behind the scenes of my YouTube content calendar, how I organize everything from recording to editing, I do have another video tutorial, which I'll link up in a card here and in the description box below. Now with vidIQ, you can also dive even deeper. Let's say you wanna go for email marketing for beginners, but you wanna narrow in even more. We can click that key phrase right here and it'll give us results based on those keywords. We've got email marketing for beginners 2020, even though it's not 2020, it's 2021 now, but I would basically change that to 2021. And here's another search term. We've got email marketing tutorial for beginners. So you can alternate it, use different keywords if you want, so it's not so common. However, if we do take a look at the search results, we've got 4,654 searches per month as opposed to 47,000. And competition is low compared to very low. However, what I found is when you target a particular keyword, sometimes you'll get ranked for other keywords, like even broader, such as email marketing uh, tutorial or email marketing tips, whatever is the most relevant. The YouTube algorithm knows what to look for and what to suggest to other users. Once you've done your research in vidIQ, what you can actually do is to export some of these keywords so that you can simply copy and paste it over to YouTube. So simply check the ones that you wanna target. So the primary, of course, the key phrase that you're going for is email marketing for beginners in this example. And then you wanna choose some other relevant keywords such as email marketing, email marketing uh, for beginners 2020, 21. We'll modify that later on. Email marketing tutorial and anything else that's relevant.
And from here, we can either copy those six tags and then paste it into our YouTube uh, video settings, or we can export it into a CSV file. But let's say you wanna simply copy and paste it over to your YouTube video. Simply click the copy six tags. And when it comes time to upload your video or you wanna change those tags of yours for existing videos, simply go to your video settings, scroll down to the tag section, and I'll just paste it in right here. Now adding those keywords into the tag section is just one part of YouTube SEO. YouTube themselves even say that tags aren't as important as adding them to the title and description of your YouTube video. In the title of your video, you can see that I've added email marketing for beginners. You don't just add it like that. You wanna make sure you have an enticing title as well and integrate those keywords into the title. Here's one way you can do it by saying email marketing for beginners in five steps. In addition, you also wanna add those keywords into your description. So in this video, you'll learn email marketing for beginners in five steps. What you also wanna do is add those other secondary keywords into your description and possibly into your title too. So if you look down below where we've added the tags or the keywords, we can see we've added email marketing for beginners 2020, which I'll modify right now. So I've added 2021, I'll add that in as a keyword. But before we add a secondary keyword to our title specifically, we wanna make sure we choose the one that has uh, you know, better results. So going back to vidIQ, I would search here and just basing it based on those uh, guidelines that I shared in this video. We don't wanna target email marketing because that's already in our main keyword, email marketing for beginners. We've got email marketing tutorial at 25,000 searches per month, very low competition, as opposed to these other two. So from these results, I would certainly choose email marketing tutorial. So go back to your video settings and here I can add email marketing tutorial. Next up, you've got the description to fill in. So in a way, you wanna also make sure you make sense in your description and not keyword stuffing, which is against YouTube's terms and conditions. So what I would say in this example is what you'll learn in this email marketing tutorial are the very steps I took to grow my email list. And as you can see, this actually works as a description because it makes sense. So definitely add your target keywords in your title and description. But as you can see right here with the tag section, tags play a minimal role in helping viewers find your video. I haven't tested between adding tags and no tags, but since that option is open and available, I just add the tags anyway. The next thing I wanna share with you in terms of keyword research is knowing what keyword to use as opposed to another. In this example, what I'm going to show you is email marketing platform versus email marketing service which keyword should you use as opposed to another? So if you're in a tough situation in terms of what keyword to use as opposed to another, like A versus B, like email marketing platform versus email marketing service, Google Trends is definitely going to help you. What you wanna do is to simply go to trends.google.com, search for that first search term, then the second search term. So we've got email marketing platform here versus email marketing service. You can even compare it to another by adding another keyword right here. Making sure that you search worldwide and at least the past 12 months. The clear winner you can see here is the red, which is email marketing service. So in my YouTube title and description, I will definitely use email marketing service over email marketing platform. But don't stress out too much over this stage, but I think this just helps in terms of, you know, which one you should prioritize over the other. I wanna share a bonus tip with you here in terms of getting topics and ideas for your next video. And that's simply by looking at the community, you know, look at what people are asking, whether that's on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, you know, what do they, what are their biggest questions? What are their biggest concerns? What's frustrating them? By simply searching for videos of your competitors, click on one of their videos, based on the keywords, so I'll search for email marketing tips since I'm kind of in the email marketing space as well. The comments here are simply valuable and you wanna make sure you take note of these kinds of questions. For example, this one here, how soon should I start 
to try to sell something to my new subscribers? That's a great question. And here's another, do you have recommendations on how to get good subscribers? By this, I'm sure he means subscribers who actually engage in your emails, watch your videos, go to wherever it is that you want them to go to, buy your products or your services. So that's my keyword research process and some of the other tools and steps that I take in terms of identifying winning keywords. Taking the time and the steps in doing proper keyword research can mean the difference between hundreds of views to thousands of views. As a reminder, YouTube SEO and doing keyword research is just one aspect of growing your YouTube channel and getting views to your videos. What's more important is your video and the content that you're sharing. Your content matters and making sure you can keep your viewers watching from start to finish is even more crucial. So that wraps up this video. Do check out vidIQ, link in the description box below for your free account. If you have any questions about anything I mentioned in this video, be sure to comment below. And if you found this video helpful and valuable, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new and turn on notifications too. In the meantime, be sure to watch these next relevant videos next. Thank you.